Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are enjoying all the videos that I am uploading. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please go ahead and subscribe. Today's problem is diagonal traverse. Given a list of integers, nums, return all the elements of nums in diagonal order as shown in the below images. So we are given with a list of list of integers, right? So it's not a single list, but it is a list of list. Maybe you can imagine it as a two dimensional uh, grid. But uh, as you see in the example two, right? So even though it's a two dimensional grid, right? So the grid ha doesn't have all the uh, basically cells in it. So these are not actually uh, M by N or N by N matrix as, or grid, but these are something known as jagged arrays, right? So let me write that uh, down here. So they, they are called jagged arrays, right? So they are called jagged arrays. So jagged arrays is nothing but, so you have a list of lists, but each list has variable uh, number of elements in it. So that's what uh, should be understood from the example two, because that is a real depiction of the problem. So example one, it's, it's actually N by N, right? Three by three matrix, right? So that's uh, probably not what uh, the description want to really convey, but example two is what the description want to really convey because it, it is saying list of list, but it doesn't say uh, how many number of elements are there in each list. So in each list, the number of elements are variable, right? So that's the reason why example two is um, making more uh, better description better justification to the description than example one. So our, prob our problem is we have to return all the elements in the list of lists in a diagonal order. So let's try to understand the example one, right? So diagonal order is one, four, two, seven, five, three, eight, six, and nine. So that's what we are going to return in the output. So if you come to the example two, right? So there are elements missing in those diagonals, right? So we don't ha we don't really uh, care about the missing things, but barring the missing things, return the rest of the items, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So there are like sixteen elements in the uh, list of lists totally, right? We have to pass through the diagonal and give them back as the answer. So in this case, there are how many diagonals? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So there are totally nine diagonals uh, in this. Even though not all diagonals have all elements. So some diagonals have uh, one element, some diagonals have two, some diagonals have three, like that, right? So wherever you don't have the element, you just don't consider, but still, try to return whatever the elements that you have in the particular array. So let's go ahead and try to understand what strategy that we are going to use, right? So these are jagged arrays. I would, I would like to repeat the name, right? So jagged arrays. So these are, there are N lists, let's say, right? So there are N number of lists and each list has a variable number of elements. So that is our problem. And if you were to represent these lists in a, a grid fashion, right? In a grid fashion, where uh, some of the cells are not enabled. That means the in some of the cells, the elements are not present. So that's what it is. So what is the strategy that we are going to use now, right? So what we are going to use is, we are going to create a map, right? So map, it will have an integer as a key and a list of integer as values. So this is what my map structure is going to look. Key is a, key is a index, right? And uh, values, are the elements which satisfy the index. That is the key, right? So we are going to see what is actually index what, that we are going to put and what is the values that we are going to put. So values are typically the values that we are given in the list of lists. But what is the index, the key that we are going to use? That's what is the uh, logic here, right? So let's say uh, ith list, right? Ith list has, uh, let me put a hyphen so that it's better. So ith list has m elements. So let's say, you have i ith list, it has m number of elements. So starting from zero to m minus one, right? So the key will be i plus index of the element in the ith list, right? So you have i plus the index of the element in the ith list. So what 
for this thing, right? So what it will have the indexes are i plus 0, i plus 1, so on, i plus m minus 1. So those are the indexes, right? And the values are their corresponding elements in the particular list, in the ith list basically. So the keys are i plus 0, i plus 1, i plus 2, i plus 3, i plus m minus 1. And the values are the corresponding um, elements in that particular ith list right so just to depict um, more understanding right so i took the example one one two three four five six seven eight nine so this is what the representation is uh, for this i have in the first list i have three elements so i have uh, just to give better understanding right so this this is the zeroth list right zeroth list so zeroth list so this is first list right first list and this is second list, right? Second list. So, in that case, uh, this is, I'm calling as i, and this is the 0 to m. So, if you see, this is same, 0, 0, 0, right? So, and the number of elements are 0 to m minus 1. That's what we said, right? 0, 1, 2. And first list, this is 1. 1 will be the prefix here, right? and 0, 1, 2. So second list, 2 will be the prefix, 1, 2, right? So like that. So these are the i plus whatever the value that you want to call it as, right? i plus the index of the element in the ith list. So that's what we are going to have. So that is the index. So essentially for this, it is 0 plus 0. For this, it is 0 plus 1. For this, it is 0 plus 2. 1 plus 0, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 2, 2 plus 0, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 2. So those are the indices, right? That we are going to uh, create. That means the keys, right? So we are going to use those keys in our map. So essentially the map will have 0 plus 0, that is a map. 0, 0 plus 1 and 1 plus 0. So that will have uh, the keys 1, so 1. And 2 plus 0, 1 plus 1, 0 plus 2, that will have 2. And 2 plus 1, 1 plus 2, that will be 3. And 2 plus 2, that is 4, right? So, these are the uh, uh, keys and the corresponding list, uh, corresponding values. 0 will have only 0 and 1 will have 4 and 2. So, 0, 1, that means 0th list, first element and first list, 0th element. Both will have the key as 1. That's why we took 4 and 2. And if you look at the the map has two right the index two the key is two right in that case two zero two plus zero is two one plus one is also two and zero plus two is also two so in that case we have three elements so you grab those three elements seven five three and put it into the map so once we have this kind of bad map built up right then we will merge all the values so the keys are zero one two four right uh, 234 0 1 2, 3, 4. but we don't care about the keys we only about, care about the values so we merge all the values and return as the output so if you merge the values right what will become so 0 is actually it's 1 okay so if you merge the, merge the values what it will become 1 4 2 7 5 3 8 6 9 so that's what we want to return right 1 4 2 7 5 3 8 6 9 that's what we want to return so that's the basic logic okay so what if some of the elements are missing here let's say uh, right so let's put it this way, right? So this is what it's going to look. So uh, what we will miss something, right? So two one is there, but one two is not there, right? So the three third element. So this is not going to be there in the map. So that's that's the adjustment that we need to make as far as the code. As long as it satisfies, right? So you will have all the things in here. Let's say uh, uh, this doesn't even have all this, right? Let's say, right? In that case, let's say this is only the element, right? In that case, what we, we are going to have, so just let me get back, yeah, now. So zero, zero is one element and uh, one zero is also a one single element, right? So four, two, so four is not there. And uh, two, zero will have only two elements, it said, right? So it will not have three, seven and five and three will have only one element, four will have only one element. So that's how it's going to look. So our uh, answer will be one, four, seven, five, eight, nine. So that will be the answer, right? So we'll have to uh, work through the given list uh, of lists in this fashion. So all we are trying to do here is convert the list of lists into a map and 
take the output from the, uh, take the values from the map and leave the keys alone and return the merged list what i'm calling so all these are a list right in the in the map so this is a list this is a list this is a list this is a list so they are all the list so merge all of them and return a bigger list that's it that will be the answer for our question let's go ahead and uh, look at the uh, code for this right so it's the same idea that we are going to use so these are okay let's go yes here it's a code so for find diagonal order we are passed with the list of list and we ca we're calling it as num so as i said we are going to declare a map right so it will map 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 has an integer and a list of integers so just like uh, what it described here right it will have just two things and then we are get trying to get the number of lists that is n so what we are doing essentially here is we are going from the last list right so in in my example i showed you from the first, 0th list but here in the code wise because we want to return in the order that we want it right right so we, we want one to be first four second seven five like that right so this is how i'm going to do it right so we are going from the last list to first list so it will be going from uh last list to first list n minus one th list to zeroth list right and in the each in each list right we parse through zero to m right so zero in my in my example i said m minus one right so that is what nums of i count minus one that is a list count right nums of i is a list right nums is a list of list nums of i is a single list so we go through that and now what we are trying to do is we are trying to create a key i plus j right so what I'm calling J is I plus index of the element i in the list. So zero to whatever the count rate. So I plus J. So that is what I'm going to create a key. So if it is not there in the key, we are going to create a new map, a new entry for that. Once it is created, we are going to add the corresponding element into that particular list. So basically what we are trying to do here is we are doing this map. Okay. Map of uh, all the elements and corresponding uh, map of the, all the indexes or the keys and corresponding um, elements right so once you have that map in place right so you are going to get the uh, each individual list and merge into a big list right so now with this for loop we are doing the mapping and now once the map is available what we are going to do is so create an answer uh, list that we want to do and and we could do what for i is equal to zero i is less than map dot count so we know how many number of uh, map entries are available right so map dot count add right for each for zero we are, we are going to add one uh, the zeroth list first list second list third list fourth list to the answer map right so answer list sorry so answer list so that's what we are going to do so basically we will be keeping a bigger list here right one and four seven five eight nine so this is a bigger list so this is our answer list so this is finally we are going to return right by converting to array because it is expecting an array so if you don't want to create a basically a list and converting to array right so you keep track of the number of elements that you are adding here right and then uh, simply create a array of that length and add elements into that array and you're good to go so anything it will work so basically instead of uh, creating array i'm creating a list and finally converting it to an array before returning so that's how the code is going to work let's go ahead and look at the time complexity for this algorithm right so basically uh, since we don't know uh, let's make an assumption right make an assumption you have n lists right and on an average on average you have uh, uh, m elements in the list right m elements in the list since we don't know right so we are say saying on average we have m elements in the list so in this case what we are going to do here is so this is going with order of m into n right so this for loop is going through order of m into n right so the time complexity will be order of m into n 
where m is the number of average number of list number of average number of elements in the list n is the number of list so that's the uh, this is what is using to create a map right create a map right so once the map is created right we go through the map and try to uh, prepare the answer for it so the map will have how many entries uh, at the max it will have maximum of 2 into maximum of 2 into n right that's the number of elements it's possible but there are constraints that are given let's go ahead and look at the constraints right uh, so the constraints are 10 power 5 10 power 5 so the number of lengths so the list number of lists could be 10 power 5 and each list could contain 10 power 5 right and each number is 10 power 9 but we are say we are said uh, we are given an, another thing is there could be maximum of 10 power 5 elements in the uh, list of the numbers right so the maximum elements could be only 10 power 5 that means if there are 10 power 5 lists that means there are only one element in each list but if there are less than that there is in some list there are more elements in some lists there are less elements so the lists are not uh, homogeneous but they are heterogeneous that's why we are saying average number of elements in the list are m so the time complexity for this will be order of m into n overall right so that's the time complexity and the space complexity for this right so how many uh, what space we are using actually right so the map that is one and this is the answer array that we are going to return so the answer array will have the same number of elements as the list of lists right so that means a space that we are creating here is order of mn right because we need to have that minimum right so order of m into n is the space that we are going to create for the answer array so that's one thing and how much we are going to create for the map also so the map also will have typically order of m into n elements in the list so the basically here right so here so if you look at this map right so this will the right side the values will have one four two seven five eight nine how many are there basically um three plus two one three plus two plus one six elements right so six elements are there in the map as well right so that will be also storing m into n right plus this element right m into n plus the elements onto the left side right so but these are more than this right the worst case this could be also m into n right so the on the whole the space complexity will be order of m into n for this particular algorithm so if you still have any questions please post them in the comment section below the video i'll get back to you as soon as i can uh, just to want to remind you again again if you haven't subscribed to my channel please go ahead and subscribe i will i will all go you will also get the notifications if you click the bell icon for all my future videos also please share among your friends i'll be back with another video very soon till then goodbye